So the passages such as 1 Peter chapter 1, 10 to 12 and Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2, 6 to 8. Makikita po natin dito na they are ignorant of the plan of God. They then, hindi nila alam yung plano ng Panginoon. Actually, even yung mga prophecy, messianic psalms, uh, uh, prophetic uh, utterances about the Messiah. Actually, it was hidden. It was coded actually. So that itinago ito ng Panginoon sa kaaway, yung kanyang plano. Look at 1 Peter, sabi niya. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours Search and inquire carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the suffering of Christ and subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things that we have now been announced to you through those who preach the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven into which angels long to look. See, even the angels, hindi nila alam eh. Di ba? God hid these things. Eh. It was revealed to the writers, to Peter, by revelations. Kaya nga, nung tayo nang born again, hindi tayo nang born again, then nag-repent tayo. It was a revelation of the Father of who Jesus is. Kaya nga, ang born again, sa Bible, Genesis, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3, sa Greek is born from above. You were born from above. There was a revelation of the Father to us who Jesus is. Unless the Father revealed to you who Jesus is, you will never knew God. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians. Sabi niya, Chapter 2, verse 6. Yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, referring to the devil. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. Uh, so this secret wisdom has been revealed, di ba? And then none of the rulers of this age understood this. This is referring to the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For if they had, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. See? In other words, the devil did not know the plan of God. They didn't know about the death of Jesus Christ. That without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission of sin. He doesn't know about it. Nung nangyari na lang sa kanya na intindihan, na yung kanyang ginawa pala was what? The way for the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and His defeat. The plan was hidden in a plain sight. Even after the resurrection in the presence of the risen Christ himself, Jesus has to open their minds to understand the scripture. Remember in Luke chapter 24, the two disciples walking in the road to Emmaus? He's, he's talking to them. But they cannot identify that this is the resurrected Jesus Christ until God opened their spiritual eyes. At sa kanila na intindihan yung sinasabi ng ano ng Panginoon. Even for us today, we cannot understand the scripture because the scripture is a spirit and it gives life. The scriptures are not to be understood by our human mind. It has to be our spirit. So the plan of salvation and its relationship to the Old Testament scripture has to be revealed supernaturally. Kaya tandaan po natin, uh, unless the scriptures is revealed to you, you will not able to do it. Example sa tithes na lang, you've been heard about the tithes, but a lot of people are not faithful in tithing. Why? It is only an information of, to their minds, but not a real one. 
revelations. They knew about prayer. Many things that we uh, knew by our mind, but we never act on it. Why? Because it was not revealed to us supernaturally. There is no reason to expect the powers of darkness to have been given such understanding. God will not give them that understanding. Itinago nga niya eh. So sa atin lang yun. Okay? We are the privileged. His own people. Next question. Can Satan and demons read our minds? No, he cannot. There is no scriptural evidence that the members of the heavenly host know a person's mind or thoughts the way God does. The fact that the angels appear to people in dreams and visions, you can read in Matthew 1, 20 and Matthew chapter 2 and Acts chapter 10, seems to suggest that supernatural being can tap into one's mind. So they make a conclusion na dahil yung angels nag sa dream, ay ano, natatap nila yung one's mind. The assumption is that since evil spirits are fallen angels, then Satan and demons have the ability to occupy space in, this, in the human mind. So they just assume it. No. There are no scriptural examples of Satan or an evil spirit appearing to someone in a dream. Only angels. Okay? So, I heard also a prophet who says that Di ba sabi ni Lord, uh, kapag kayo nag-isip ng malaswa sa isang babae, you already committed adultery. Di ba? Hindi mo ba ginagawa? It's all in the mind lang. You already committed adultery. At ang sabi ng na isang prophet, sabi niya, uh, in his experience with the walk with the Lord, na ang ating thoughts daw ay ano, exposed. Even though the enemy cannot read our mind, our thoughts are exposed in the realm of the spirit. That's why sabi ng Bible, meditate on things above, not on things uh, below. And then sabi sa Philippians chapter 4, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, meditate on these things. Because when you meditate on the negative one, your thought will be exposed. That's why you sabi sa Luke, it's either you emit light or you emit what? Darkness. Okay, so let us be careful of what we meditate. Diba? What we focus on. Okay, that's the warning of the scripture. Next, can a Christian be demon-possessed? No. Why? Because Christ cannot be owned by Satan or demons. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. So we cannot be owned by, the, by demons or by evil. The body of Christ, the ecclesia, has been obtained with his own blood. We have been what? Purchased, redeemed by, our, by, his, own, by his own blood. Even the spirit and Christ dwell within those who believe. So how come na uh, the demon can possess a person? <clears throat> Those who are in Christ have a new identity as members of the family of God. We belong now to what? To the family of God. Okay, Galatians 3.26. Now, if you belong to the family of God, anong business meron ang kaaway sa buhay mo? Wala, di ba? Colossians 1.13, believers had been delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. So nung tayo ang believer, the enemy has a legal right over our life. Why? Because we are what? Uh, patronizing his uh, sin. 
And now when we get born again, we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son. So we are God's inheritance, sabi ng Ephesians 1.18. So ibig sabihin, you belong to Christ. That's the reason why he gave his Holy Spirit in us. Because when the last days will come, hindi pwedeng i-claim ng enemy na tayo is kanya. Okay? The Holy Spirit is what a guaranteed deposit na pagdating ng panahon, the Lord God can claim for us because we are God's inheritance. The word possession never even appears in the Bible in the passages where Jesus or the apostle cast evil spirit of an individual. Hindi yun. English semantics lang po yun. There is never a Greek word for possession that stands behind it. So, kalimutan niyo yung word na possession. Nilagay lang yan ng mga translator. Demon possession is always translation of a single Greek word, daimoni zomai. Yan yung single uh, Greek word na pinag-translate sa English na ano, demon possession. Words for ownership or possession used by some of the translator of the New Testament. So they translated it as what? Ownership or possession. And the expression, he has a demon, does appear So no Greek word for possession or ownership. It is English semantics lamang po, not the Greek word, which have led to the controversy over whether Christian can be possessed by demons. Okay? If ownership is not a workable understanding of the Greek word daimone zomai, how should it be translated and understood? So kung hindi possession, ang ibig sabihin ng daimoni zomai, ano ang tama? The best alternative is to transliterate daimoni zomai as what? Demonize. Okay? So, question. Does the New Testament help us understand how a Christian might be demonized while not being owned by Satan? Is it possible that the Christian can be demonized and not being owned by Satan. Yes, I'll show it to you in the scripture. Can Christian come under a high degree of influence by a demonic spirit? Yes. Or is it possible for Christian to yield control of their bodies to a demonic spirit in the same way that they yield to the power of sin? The answer to the question is yes. The New Testament has several passages that suggest Christian can fall under the influence of Satan. First example, 1 Timothy 4.1. Now the Spirit expressly say that in the latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirit and teaching of demons. See Another in 2 Timothy 2.26, he instructs Timothy to gently correct such opponent so they might escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. So is it possible? It is possible that the Christian can be what? Influenced or demonized by the evil spirit, but they are not owned. They cannot be owned. The idea that believers could be captured by Satan and made servants of his will certainly fits the notion of what? Demonization. That's the meaning of what? Demonization. Ephesians 4.27, sabi niya, giving opportunity to the devil. Di ba? Sabi niya, do not give the devil an opportunity. Or habitual unrepentant sin. Unrepentant sin, di ba? Kaya sabi ng 1 John 3.8, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. So if there is an unrepentant sin, a, a habitual unrepentant sin over our lives, 
we are allowing ourselves, we are giving the enemy an opportunity, what? To oppress us. So yielding to temptation actually enslaved the believer. So we're given us the freedom. When Jesus Christ died and we got born again, we are given us the freedom. Whether our body be a slave of righteousness or our body becomes slave of unrighteousness. So this kind of lifestyle can rightly be understood as a kind of what? Demonization. Aside from enslavement to sin, Satan seeks to control believers by other means, whether mental, emotional, or physical, through, through emotional sickness, di ba? Yung iba, meron mga tinatawag na uh, yung mental illness, di ba? Manic depressions, or physical sickness, ailment, cancer, name it, marami siya no. Sabi ron, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, frolls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Paul's memorable statement, remember that? The messenger of Satan. Yung thorn of the flesh. Na he has a thorn of the flesh. It was a mess that caused by the messenger of Satan. It was given to him. Okay, We just don't know what, what it means by thorn of the flesh. It might be a weakness or it might be a sin or what, uh, 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 a sickness or a form of weaknesses. Uh, we don't know. The main point is that while Christians cannot be owned by Satan, an idea that derives from the unfortunate possession language, they can be demonized. Tandaan po natin, they cannot be owned by the devil, but they can be what? Demonized. Demonization can take various forms. It can be persecutions, harassment, being captivated by false teaching and enslavement to sin. Mawala ako? Ay, ako. Wait lang po. Uh, I have some technical problem here. Next question. In relation to the powers of darkness, the question now is, what is a spiritual warfare? Now we understand how The enemy operates. So one of the most popular topics in contemporary Christian interest in the powers of darkness is what we call the spiritual warfare. And many Christians have come to think of spiritual warfare as a specialized form of ministry. This is the part of this ministry is what? Exorcism. Part of this ministry is deliverance and a certain type of intercession, okay? And these ministries place a significant focus on confrontation with evil spirit or what we call power encounters. Episode in the New Testament where Jesus, his disciples, and other apostles, example Paul, cast out demons, or challenge evil spirit 
are taken as a template background for the passages that talk about the spiritual war in which believers find themselves. So, ang tinitinan nilang halimbawa ay yung ginawa ni Jesus, ginawa ng mga, ni Apostle Paul na sila nagpalayas ang demon who challenged this evil spirit. Ito yung ginagamit nilang background para sabihin nila that we are in a war. Okay? We can find it in Ephesians 6.10 and 2 Corinthians 10.3-6. And also, there is the Deuteronomy 32 world view of the Old Testament has also recently become a point of reference for the spiritual of warfare. What is Deuteronomy 32? This is when he divided the nations. In verse 8 and 9, he divided nations and boundaries. And he put what? Sons of God ruling over those nations. Tandaan po natin in Genesis chapter 10, chapter 11, there are 70 nations that God divorced himself. He divorced these nations, the 70 nations mentioned in Genesis 10. Why? Ayaw nilang sumunod sa Panginoon. So, nung pinag-divide sila, ang inilagay ni Lord are the sons of God to rule over them. But the problem is, the sons of God did allow si Job. That's why in Psalm 82, God judges them. What is their lousy job? They receive worship for themselves. They made what? Injustices to the people. Oh, kaya hinatulan sila ni Lord. That is, you can, you can read it in Psalm 82, 1 to 6, that God is judging them. In verse 6, and sabi niya, Yes, you are a son of the Most High, but you will die like men. That was the judgment of God to this fallen son. So, in other words, these nations, the 70 nations, are ruled by what? This uh, spirit. That's why in Daniel chapter 10, you can read the prince of Persia. Oh, may mga prince. These are rulers. Okay? In those nations. And then pagdating sa Genesis chapter 12, God raised up Abraham. And he chose him to be what? Another nations. So it becomes what? Israel against the surrounding nations, the 70 nations. Okay? So, in other words, this Deuteronomy 32 worldview, it means that in every nations and every boundaries and territories, there are rulers. That's why in the Philippines, there is a prince that is a sign in the Philippines. That's why he controls the government. He controls the economy. He controls the people. And the question now, how are we going to fight this spirit? How are we going to evict them from this territory that God gave us? The Philippines is for us. The Philippines is for Christ. Diba? It's been prophesied many times. But how it is to be realized? This idea that rebellious spiritual being have power and authority over specific places. So yan yung ibig sabihin ng Deuteronomy 32 world view. Kaya kahit anong sigaw nyo, kahit anong claim nyo that the Philippines is for Christ, it will not happen until this spirit are evicted from our territory. Daniel 10 present a conflict between rebellious territorial spirit. Diba? Minention doon, the prince of Greece, the prince of Persia. Even God's angel, angels, including Michael, is called what? The priest chief, the chief prince. Diba? Remember, Daniel is praying for a revelation in Daniel chapter 10 about the 70 years. It's over. Ano nangyari? The angel came, Gabriel came late, 21 days later. At ang sabi ng angel, I was hostage by the prince of Persia. And God has to send, ano, uh, 
the chief prince. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung ano, makikipag-era. Siya ang chief prince. Eh. Oh. Kung yung si Gabriel is also a prince, was hostage by the prince of Persia, can you imagine what will happen if we will be the one doing the warfare? Kaya nga, na-imagine ko na kung paano siya nagtatawa sa atin, ang kaaway, if we will be doing the old ways of doing the spiritual warfare. See the reality. New Testament support for the concept is found in the passages referring the rulers or the God of this world or the God of this age. And Paul recognizes it, that this spirit are the one controlling the territories. So along with other description of the spiritual warfare. Now, C. Peter Wagner is the one who coined the term spiritual warfare. Okay? Sa po yung nagpauso niyan. Fundamentally, confrontation with the spirit world isn't the pattern in the New Testament in regard to the defeat of the fallen sons of God or the principality. Why? Sabi ni Lord, it is finished. Ginawa na niya. Siya ang gumawa, hindi tayo. Remember that jurisdictional authority of the sons of God has been nullified by the resurrection and the ascension of Christ. Yan ang pagkatandaan natin. It's been finished. Tapos na. Okay? Kaya sabi niya, I've taken, sabi niya, I have, uh, uh, sabi niya, uh, the keys of life and death is in his hand. Di ba? All authority in heaven and earth was given to me. Lord Jesus said, go and make disciples. So he nullified already all the jurisdictional authority of the sons of God. Wala na. The reality is the great commission, the call to reclaim the nations. Kaya sabi niya, go therefore and make disciples of all nations is the answer. And part of the great commission is what? You need to understand how the courts of heaven operates. Because the kingdom of darkness will lose what is essentially a spiritual war. They already defeated. Tapos na. Because the gates of hell will not able to withstand against the ecclesia. Di ba sabi ng Bible, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. The devil has the gates, but we have the keys. They have the gates, pero wala sa kanila ang susi. Nasa atin na ang susi. It's been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is why believers are never natin, commanded to rebuke spirit and demand their flight in the name of Jesus. That's why I've been teaching about the courts of heaven or the divine council. What you only need to do now is to make a petition before the court. Like here in the natural court. The only way to evict a squatter is what? You go to the court. You file a petition for evictions. Diba? Ganun din po sa langit because Jesus already did it in the cross of Calvary. So when we go to the court and make petitions, that is way of exercising our great commissions. Dahil ang sabi ni Lord, go and make disciple of all nations, baptizing them. Can you imagine how do you baptize the whole nations? It is not an individual discipleship. The discipleship that God talking here is discipling a nation. It is unnecessary. And their authority has been withdrawn by the Most High. That's what we have to believe. That's why very important ang courts of heaven. That is where we operate. How do we understand spiritual warfare in the context of the conflict between two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan? Matthew 12, diba sabi ng Bible, if it is by the spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. It's no coincidence 
that the expulsion of demons from people and places accompanied the inauguration of the kingdom of God. Kaya nung sinabi niya, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's why Jesus demonstrated the casting out demons para no, that is what? The inaugural thing na ginawa ng Panginoon para sabihin, andito na ang paghahari ng Panginoon. And He finishes it. He sealed it in the cross of Calvary. As the kingdom of God grows, tandaan nyo, the kingdom of darkness shrinks and loses ground. That's why the warfare is all about the battle of altar. The warfare is all about a battle of altar. Ano lang ang gagawin natin? We just need to build an altar for the Lord. In every areas and territories that we belong, we have to build an altar there. Because an altar is what? A portal for the heavenly beings to enter. And that's the reason why the demonic forces enters our territory is because he has his own altar there. And where is the altar of God? And if we as believers of our Lord Jesus Christ build an altar, we create portals in the realm of the spirit and many angelic being or host enters in our territory and they are the one warring for us. They're the one executing the judgment of God over these fallen sons or demons. Jesus never commanded that his followers confront spiritual entities. Instead, he gave us the great commissions. Why? Because our security is at risk. Like in the natural court. It's illegal to take matters into your own hands. If you experience injustice, you go to the court. You file a case. Same through in the spirit realm. If you experience injustices, sickness, poverty, depression, every uh, contradictions in life. Di ba sabi ng Bible? I came to give light and make it more abundantly. The opposite of those abundant things the pinangako ni Lord, the Lord is what? That is what we call contradictions in life. And if you are experiencing contradictions in life, it means the enemy are messing your life. And what do you do? That is an injustice. You go to the court and you make a petitions before the court. Submit it before the court and let the judge, the king of kings and the lord of lords, Release a decree. Nakuha niyo po? Kasi our security is at risk if we will be the one facing this spirit. Remember in Daniel chapter 10, powerful pa rin sila at walang sinasabi sa scripture nung sila ay uh, tinanggalan ng Lord ng authority, wala dahil silang power. They still have the power. And remember, They were, we were created a little lower than the angels. They are much more powerful than us. So this great commission is the reason Jesus gave his life and rose from the dead. So the work of Christ was not about power encounters with demons. The goal is what? To bring Eden. The goal is to bring Eden, the presence of God. Because when we bring Eden, we are fulfilling the desire of God to have a human family with him forever. That's why he chose to dwell in us. Because he wants a family. Read Ephesians chapter 3. One day he's going to unite the family in heaven and the family here on earth. Finishing fallen spirit does not accomplish God's original Edenic goal. Mga kapatid. That's why in Luke chapter 10, di ba nag-report sa mga disciple, ano sabi nila? Oh Lord, yung mga demonyo, ano, sumusunod sa yung pangalan. Tuwan-tuwa sila. Anong sagot ni Jesus? Oh, huwag kayong matuwa na yung demonyo sumusunod sa pangalan. Oh, matuwa kayo na ang pangalan nyo ay nasulat sa langit. So sinasabi ng Panginoon, hindi natin ikatuwa yung ano about the punishing of this fallen spirit. 
because it does not accomplish God's original identity goal. Necessary lang yan. Na-fulfill na nga ni Lord dyan eh. Di ba? Nagtagumpay na siya over those fallen sons. So the Great Commission is a comprehensive plan for spiritual warfare. At kasama sa Great Commissions ay yung understanding natin about the Divine Council and the, or the courts of heaven. And a careful reading of the true primary passages used to support power encounter spiritual warfare bear out the preceding assertion that the spiritual warfare is not about confronting spiritual entities but it's all about the furtherance of the gospel by the committed believers. Look at these two major uh, scripture na ginagamit of supporting verses every time we say there is a spiritual war that's going to happen. Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. So, they assume na may gera. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand firm, Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as use of your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the spirit. With all prayer and supplications. With prayers and supplications. The word supplication there is disease. Nang ibig sabihin ay petitions. To the end. And the word petition means something that you requested from a judge. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. See? Petitions for all the saints. And also for me that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So in Paul's explanation of spiritual warfare to the church at Ephesus, he never recommends that believers confront the supernatural rulers and powers. That's why if you're going to read the scripture, even in Jude, in the book of Jude, when he has uh, Archangel Michael has a conflict with the devil about the body of Moses. Ang sabi lang ng, ng angel, again ito, the Lord rebukes thee. In Zechariah chapter 3, we can read, Joshua the high priest is in the court of heaven and he's being accused by the devil and the angel of the Lord, I believe that is the Lord Jesus Christ. At ang sabi niya is what? The Lord rebuked thee. So in our understanding of the courts of heaven, it is only the judge has the power to rebuke. But for so long we have been taught that we can do that. That's why he never recommends the believers to confront the supernatural rulers and powers. Why? Because our security is at risk. That's why if somebody is nakulam, you bring it before the court. Bakit siya nakulam? Merong legal right ang enemy. So if the enemy has a legal right over his personal life or it's either a personal sin or the sin of the forefathers, remember yung bata na may epilepsy na kinas out ni Jesus yung demons? What waras this child na ma ma ano siya, ma demonize siya? I believe it's not about a personal sin. Most likely, it's the sin of the forefathers. So his list of weapons does not include exorcism. The casting out of demons means exorcism against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. 
In verse 14, the truth. These are the weapons. Truth. Ano pa? Righteousness. Gospel. Faith. Salvation. The word of God. Prayer. Walang binabanggit tungkol saan? Exorcism. Perseverance. So the spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6 is about having persevering faith in the gospel and the word of God and a living a holy prayerful life as followers of Jesus. That's the reason why. If you want to engage, kaya di ba sabi ng James chapter 4, resist the devil, the promise of God, when you resist him, he will flee from you. But how do we do the resisting? Ang alam lang natin is what? To shout at him. I resist you in Jesus' name. No. It will not work. The word resisting there in Greek means to resist the enemy as if you are in a court of law. So in other words, you have to go to the court and make petitions. Why? Because the judge is there and Jesus as our lawyer and the Holy Spirit is our witness. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. Sabiran, for we walk, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. So maliwana, our enemy is what? Our warfare is what? In the spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh. So hindi pwede yung sigaw. <laughs> but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive. To obey Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. There is no con confrontations of supernatural powers. Why? Ulitin ko, your security is at risk. That's why a lot of people, a lot of Christians were involved in the, in the spiritual warfare, yung dating ginagawa natin, laging merong backlash. Successful spiritual warfare in this passage is being a faithful disciple who is not tossed to and fro by the waves of care and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in the full scheme, according to Ephesians 4.14. So spiritual warfare is about leading a life obedient to Jesus, following his obedient example for the cause of God's visions for a kingdom on earth. So this is a lot harder than yelling commands in the name of Jesus and demons. Or more frequently, into the air, who just shout. Mas mahirap ito. Di ba? As a disciple, we need to prepare ourselves to avoid demonization in the forms of what? False teaching, temptations, and sinful life patterns. So being obedient disciple is what makes us fit soldier for Christ. The mission of every Christian is to carry out the Great Commission, the means by which the kingdom of God grows and the kingdom of darkness withdraws. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, yung spiritual warfare that we're involved is all about a battle of altar. That's why NFS, our mission is what? To establish houses of prayer into the major altars or mountain in the Philippines. The north side is the Mount Pulag, the highest mountain, because we know that the fallen sun has an altar there. So we put an altar there and maintain that altar. In the south is Mount Apu, the highest mountain. In the west, we have Mount Mantalingahan in Palawan. And in the east is Mount Hurao in Sama. So we have to establish the altar of God. Last, why do Satan and the parts of darkness resist the kingdom of God? They are already defeated. Do they think they can win? 
the New Testament theology, how the death and resurrection and ascension of Christ address the three supernatural rebellions. Alam niyo po sa Old Testament, the three uh, rebellions. Number one, the rebellions in Genesis chapter 3 in Garden of Eden. When the Nakash tempted the, the Satan and Eve to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the result, they were cast out of the garden. The second rebellion is in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, when the fallen sons of God married the daughters of men at nagkaroon silang ng anak na ang tawag ay Nephilims or giants or men of renown. That's the reason why ang sabi ng Bible, na defile ang tao at naging masama ang tao during that time. So that's why God has to what? Uh, gunawin ang mundo at mamatay yung mga fallen sana yung mga nipilin sa yon. Even after that, uh, even the time of Moses and Joshua, may mga giants pa rin. So ibig sabihin, they continue to propagate their seed. They continue to marry the daughters of men. And I believe personally, up to today, they're still doing that. And the third one is in Deuteronomy 32, when God divorced the nations, the 70 nations, and he put what? The the sons of God to rule over those nations and take the Israel and Abraham become a nation to become his what? Representative, his own family. But this nation, the 70 nations, those fallen sons, the sons of God that again fallen later on, did a lousy job. So the cost, the curse of death brought on by the original rebellion has been overturned. That's in the New Testament. All who embrace the gospel and become members of the kingdom of Jesus will overcome death in their union with him. Okay? That's why you just need faith. You just need to believe. So they will enjoy resurrection and everlasting life in God's family. So the spirit of God residing in believers sent after the ascension of Jesus diminishes the human depravity propagated, proliferated with the transgression of the sons of God before the flood. Kasi nagkaroon ng ano, genetic mutation. Yung tao, si Adan at Eva, kaya lahat ng pinanganak ng Adan at Eva, merong ano, genetic mutation. Meron yung ano, uh, kasi tandaan po natin yung ating sin, wala sa isip, it's on our genes. Anyway, next week we'll have a series about the science of deliverance. Pag-usapan natin yun. So, and because of the ascension of Christ, it removes, it diminishes human depravity. Not in our own human determination or even in our uh, uh, persuasion or human persuasion. Hindi tayo magiging holy. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. But the territorial authority of the rebellious sons of God allotted to them by the Most High in the judgment at Babel has been withdrawn. Diba? Kinuha na ni Lord yung authority nila and nullified by the design of the Most High in the work of Jesus. Ibinigay sa atin. Nalala niyo yung authority was taken by God. Sabi niya, all authority in heaven and on earth. Kinuha na niya. At hindi niya ibinalik sa Ama kundi ibinilit niya sa kanyang eklisiya. Ibinigay sa atin yung authority. Now, it's up to us. How are we going to use this authority? So the Great Commission is about awakening all people everywhere to this truth so that they may embrace it by faith. So why do they resist? Why the devil resist? Because they realize that they cannot reverse this thing. The judgment has been given to them. They cannot reverse it. They just buying time lang. And second, ang kanilang ginagawa, he just want to ano, uh, to destroy the harvest of soul. Yun lang yun. Surely they know they are not stronger than God. Alam nila yun. At hindi sila magtatagumpay. Alam din nila yun. They're just buying time lang. The power of darkness do indeed understand these things. Alam nila yung. Demons, for example, when conversing with Jesus, knew the fate that awaited with them. Di ba sabi sa Matthew chapter 8, verse 29? 
hindi pa namin oras, hindi pa namin panahon. Why are you here? Oh, di ba? Demons, for example, uh, were the events of the final stages of the day of the Lord begin to unfold. The devil will understand that his time is short. Revelation 12. 12. He was powerless to resist being cast down so he knows the Most High is superior than him. Alam niya yun. Despite the clarity of this point, there are several factors as to why the powers of darkness continue their evil work. Evil spirit are doing what is consistent with their character. They rebel. That's why, di ba, every time you go to the court and you make petitions, the devil, tandaan niyo po, they will not obey the decision of the court. That's the reason why you have to go back to the court and ask for what? Restraining order. Or you can ask for what? A uh, contempt of court. If those spirits will not obey the decision or the decree of the court. That's why it's very important when we receive, when we go to the court and we receive a judgment from the judge, you have to have it in your hands, in the spirit. And when you go down here on earth, you have to declare it. That is Psalm 149. This is the honor that he gave to the saints to, the saints, to execute judgment on those spirits. So how do we make, how do we enforce the judgments of God? By declaring it. Diba? You declare the decrees of God. Rebelde ang mga yan. Palagay nyo, susunod ka agad dyan? No. That's why you need to enforce the, ano, you need to ask the angels to enforce the decision of the court. And they knew that they have no opportunity of redemption. So they will not change. They will always be rebel. <laughs> Tandaan nyo po. So the second coming immediately precede the day of the Lord and his final judgment. And what is the fullness of the Gentile na sinasabi? Diba? Before the second coming and the final judgment, there's, there are certain numbers of the Gentile has come to the fold bago dumating yung final judgment. So the praise refers to the evangelization of the world's nation. Matthew 24, 14. Sabi niya in this gospel, of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So the disinherited nations created at the judgment of Babel must be reclaimed by the virtue of the evangelism of their occupants. So that's why we have to reach out to these nations. That is the job of the ecclesia. Paul thought that the completion of the Gentile evangelism was necessary for a softening and redemption of his people, the Jews. You can read in Romans chapter eight, uh, chapter 9 and chapter 10 that through the salvations or the evangelism of the Gentile, ang mangyayari ay no, it will awaken the Israel, the Israelites to come and recognize Jesus is the Messiah. Only when the Gentile evangelism is completed in God's mind will the restoration of Israel be possible. So, kaya nga po, there are certain number of Gentiles will come to the fold of the Lord Jesus Christ bago dumating yung ano, judgment day. So, opposing word evangelism allowed them more time to spread misery and destruction among humanity. Kaya yun na lang ginagawa nila. They oppose the world evangelism. This is only defiable 
definable, I mean, this is the only definable victory the powers of darkness can hope to accomplish. Yan lang ang pwede nilang gawin. To pabagalin yung harvest or ma-spoil yung harvest. Di ba? By distracting humanity. COVID-19 is a form. That's one form. Di ba? para i-oppose ang ano, world evangelism. It is the only conceivable way that they can hurt and grieve God. In this context, the resistance is understandable. Kaya po, yun ang kanilang ginagawa. Kasi alam nila, they're Days are number. Alam nila they cannot be redeemed. Alam din nila na hindi sila magtatanggumpay laban sa Diyos. The only way they can do is what? To make the ecclesia ignorant about His ways. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul, we should not be ignorant of the plans and the wiles of the devil. And I believe it's only through what? The revelation of the Holy Spirit that we can understand how we can fight this spirit being. Kaya nga po, we're teaching the divine council because to fight this spirit that are in our territories, to evict them, there is only one way. You go to the court. Because most of the time, that we are, what we are asking from the Lord, it's either the enemy has a legal right over our lives, personal lives, or the enemy has a legal right doon sa ating hinihingi. Kaya kung hindi matatanggal ang legal right na yan, mga kapatid, kahit anong sigaw ninyo, kahit anong pray nyo, hindi ho magkakaroon ng kasagutan yan. Because God is no respecter of person. God is what? A judge. He is always impartial. Nawa niyo po? Because the foundation to be strong is what? Righteousness and justice. Oh. So it's very important we understand the concept of the divine council or the courts of heaven. There are a lot of injustices that happen to our life. So ano ang ating way? Let us come. That's why sabi ni Lord. In, Hebrews chap- uh, in Luke chapter 11, verse 6, sabi niya, if this widow have received a justice from this judge who is evil and doesn't fear God and man. How much more ako na Diyos? Na yung aking bang mga elect, in Hebrew, in Greek, it means favorite. Yung aking bang mga favorite ay ano? I will let them ano, suffer from this. No, sabi niya, I will give them justice speedily. Pero there is a condition. Sabi ni Lord, nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? Ang ibig niyang sabihin, when the Son of Man comes, will He find people who believe that there is a court in heaven, there is a council in heaven, that there is a judge in heaven who wants to give justice to us. Parang dito din sa lupa. The judicial system will have no effect to you. It will not help you unless you go there and file a complaint. But because of our mindset, sabi natin, ay, ang, mga, ang korte ay para lang sa mga ano yan, mayayaman at mga kilalang tao. Pangalawa, ang mahal-mahal ng abogado. O, oh, acceptance pa lang ng criminal case. O, paano yan? O, di kaya acceptance pa ng ano, civil case. O, oh, civil case nga, 6%. Alam mo, may kiklaim ka na utang. Oh, you pay 6%. Alam mo, may utang na 10 milyon. O oh, 6% noon. 600,000 ipapail, ipibigay mo sa, sa, sa judge. Ay pag natalo ka na, goodbye na yun. Wala na yun. You see? That's why, because of our mindset, hindi natin alam na may porte pala sa langit. Ang ating Diyos pala ay judge. 
at ayaw niya na tayo ay makaranas ng injustice. Hindi natin alam na tayo citizens of heaven. And every citizen has a legal standing. Every Filipino can file a case against the government because he has a legal standing because he's a Filipino. Same true in heaven. If we have experienced a injustices, you can go to the courts of heaven and file a complaint. And that is the warfare that God wants us to engage. Not in the warfare that we have nakinalakihan natin, that we are just shouting at the top of our voice, hoping that this enemy will leave. No, they're just laughing at us. Mahirap tanggapin, but that's true. We have to go there. We have to present ourselves before the court and make petitions. I personally experienced po ito. Ang dami na ho namin na nagpetition sa Court of Heaven that the Lord answered these prayers. Mga prayers na imposible mangyari but the Lord at mga prayers na napakatagal na, na hindi nasasagot. When it was being brought to the court, God has immediately sent His answer to those prayers. Why? We found out that those prayers that we are uttering before ay ang enemy ay may legal right. At kung natanggal namin yung legal right and by confessing and by agreeing with God. Di ba sabi niya, if you confess your sin, He is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The only way that the enemy can hold on us or can throw a legal accusation against us is only through sin. Kaya ang sabi ni Lord in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 25, You just need to agree. Amen? Let us pray. Let us thank the Lord today for His goodness and His mercy.